So um, I want to not only create you know ways of explaining things to people so that they get it, but also you know saying hey. If your mom doesn't get StarCraft, this is what you should tell her. And, you know, doing a little bit more on that. Those are some of my, my, my future down-the-line goals. But, you know, I, I, am, I, I just want to bring more people in. And that's a lot of the reason why um, the Day 9 Daily started that was all focused on analysis. Yeah. Because um, with all this coverage of stuff going on, people were talking about words – and strategies that it seemed like the commentator was assuming the viewer knew. And if you didn't know it, it was just so opaque. And also, like, um, let's say you start getting into playing and you're on Icy Cup and you're a D-level player and you just can't improve and you kind of go, well, this sucks. I guess I'm not going to play anymore. And your interest sort of peters out. I wanted to create a tool for those players who were wanting to get into it but were finding roadblocks. So I can say, hey, you know, here's a way to think about it. And then, um, you know, probably the thing that warms my heart the most is when someone says, you know, I, I watched this daily and it gave me an idea to do blank. And now I'm finally starting to win games in this matchup. And that's another exhilarating, exciting thing. Again, I'm, I'm talking more about a player here as opposed to um, just an observer. But it's really exciting when I hear a story of how there's some newer player who suddenly feels the joy of solving a problem. In a game, and and that that is that's very meaningful to me. And so I've done a good bit of rambling. If if I (laughs) there's anything you'd specifically want me to touch on more, definitely let me know. I think it's very good rambling, indeed. Well, thanks. uh, And I understand that um, what you're studying is well, it has a very fancy title, but uh, I think you said in our last interview it is essentially computer game making. And correct me if I'm wrong there. Uh huh. how will that factor into your ambition of extending your esports ambassador mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. capabilities, uh, would you say? Because I think many people are wondering, uh, what will Day9 do in years to come? <laughs> um, well, actually, now that I think of it, maybe computer game making isn't the best term. Because that implies that I actually you know, like code or do art. But it, it's, it's um, more of game design, like thinking about the rule sets how do you create an interactive experience that has some sort of feel to it based upon the rules that you have laid out? And initially, I went into the program thinking that I wanted to be a game designer, be someone like Dustin Browder, the man who just creates all the units and does a lot of the balance work. Um, and you know, something that a lot of people might not know, I really love platformers. I love, love, love platformers like, you know, Mario and Castlevania Symphony of the Night, especially 2D platformers. So I, you know, thought, oh, God, those were good. That's back when games were hard, where when you died, the game was actually over and you had to start again, as opposed to now where you die and you just spawn 10 feet from where you died. And it says, you know, eventually if you if you keep dying, a fairy just carries you halfway across the level. No way, man. I like the hardcore days. The real nerf rage. Yeah, yeah. That's the best. If anyone uh, has played the original Prince of Persia, then you know what I'm talking about. But um, anyways, I digress. Um, yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Well, one, of do. My, one, one of my many talents <laughs> is not staying on topic. So, yeah, um, but, but yes, <laughs> game design. Uh... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's helped me a lot, actually, in, in terms of the commentary and just the thinking about the game. Because you begin thinking... The program created a nice vocabulary for discussing um, just rules and tendencies and trends and behaviors as they relate to the design of the game. So that's something that has been quite helpful for me, you know, especially with the phase of the beta going on where people are going, oh, Blizzard has no idea what they're doing. The roach is completely unfair. And, you know, nowadays you look at the roach and you're saying, yeah, it's getting pretty good. Might not feel as zergy as I'd want, but, you know, it's feeling pretty pretty okay. And then, you know, you think a year ago, back when the roach was one food and tier one, and it co- had constant regeneration, it literally used to be the case that it regenerated even when unburrowed. It was like the most powerful unit in the game. Um when you look at that, you're like, oh, they've made a long, you know, they've had a lot of uh, uh, progress along the way. And that's something that I think a lot of people um, seem to not know as much about the process of balancing 
and what that feels like and about the design of the unit and how it, how it creates a certain feel and emotion. And I've been mentioning that increasingly more in a lot of my casts. Um, sometimes jokingly, you know, how, how people seem to think that Dustin Browder will log into a StarCraft forum and then read a comment by some guy with 22 posts from Norway and then go, oh my god, he's right, quickly to the balance machine and it'll just churn out the solution and it'll be done, you know. Um, yeah. Well. So that's definitely been a very interesting sort of interaction is like my education with the beta phase. Um, but definitely it, as well as with the commentary aspects too. So I take it that um, should an opportunity arise where uh, there would be a professional demand for uh, top commentators to work with SE2, provided you had the option, you would perhaps uh, be interested in doing that, uh, what you're already mm-hmm. doing, but uh, beyond and more. Maybe. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to lie. If I, could, if I could make a living off this, that would be fantastic. I would just be allowed to sit in my room and, and drink coffee and <laughs> talk about video games. Like now, but better. Uh, yeah. The, the reason I ask is uh, that there's currently uh, very rich rumors going around uh, the uh, StarCraft interwebs, uh, more or less confirmed, I say, but then again, uh, we know that when they're no longer rumors, I guess, saying that <laughs> Ma- Major League Gaming will... Uh, uh, invest heavily in StarCraft 2 and try to put it on, uh, if not North American TV, but at least on uh, very representative internet. Uh, yeah. And, uh, they might be looking for professional casters. I think uh, HD StarCraft, whom I interviewed the other day, it should be online when people are watching this, uh, confirmed that he had been in talks. Uh, is that anything you know of or can disclose anything about? Um, well, I don't know, know exactly how much I'm allowed to disclose, but I definitely know that MLG has has awesome plans for StarCraft II, yeah. and I would love to, you know, have the opportunity to to cast tournaments like MLG and you know other awesome ones as well. I mean, I think MLG is a, is a big, exciting one because they're so established, um, and that's always really exciting. Um, but you know, in addition, there's a ton of other uh, tournaments that uh, perhaps are are, are new ones that you know want to catch on and i would you know be likewise delighted to cast in those as well so i mean these these are the sort of things that i think really are going to push esports forward is when they there just starts being such huge organizations giving such amazing coverage that it's almost hard to avoid it <laughs> yeah i think we're getting there i mean uh a year ago, Starcraft Brood World commentators on YouTube, they had 10,000 subscribers if they were uh, really successful, popular, and uh, on the ball. These days, it's closer to 100,000, uh, what just happened with the beta. And, uh, I mean, I don't know how many average uh, viewers you have on your netcast, but uh, they, I know there are quite many. Um, so I think we're definitely reaching the stage where the mainstream... Um, whatever that is, will we'll be hard-pressed to not know about it sooner or later. And yeah, yeah. These are exciting times. But uh, dealing with uh, some of the current um, obstacles, perhaps, at least in people's minds, of StarCraft II becoming that eSport, there's some technical uh, issues right now uh, uh-huh. regarding Battle.net 2.0, predominantly it's not having chat rooms the way people are used to, the way people want. Yeah. And also, perhaps more importantly, the regional limitations on Mm -hmm. play, that you cannot, with one copy of the game, play with people that's not on your continent, which obviously would uh, really suck if you're going to have an international tournament. Yeah. Uh, Talking from a game designer's perspective, uh, how do you think Blizzard view this... uh, this public uproar, because uh, that's really what it is, uh, regarding these controversial issues, and do you think they will deal with them, and if so, how? Yeah, I mean, the, like, I, I, I think I'm, I'm one of the increasing number of people who are just really not that concerned about it. Um, 